In Bolivia, there is expectation for the resumption of the only judicial process which is being tried in the ordinary justice system against former Senator Yanin Añez and other eight former military and police chiefs for alleged crimes committed before the senator proclaimed herself the president of the country in November 2019. Our correspondent, Freddy Morales, with the details. The first sentence in court convened the resumption of the trial as of Monday, June the 6th. The defense of former Senator Janine Añez is still confident that he can continue to delay the trial and the verdict. The procedures have not been finished yet at the constitutional court level. This process cannot continue. A conviction against my mother is a death sentence for democracy in Bolivia, and all Bolivians must keep in mind that they are taking away our democracy. They are taking away our freedom. In the meantime, the prosecutor's office prepares the closing arguments, which will lead to the delivery of the sentence. We are preparing the allegations, and we hope by Saturday we will have them ready. We have presented the indictment. They haven't withdrawn any type of evidence from us. Janine Angus is being prosecuted for alleged crimes committed before she proclaimed herself in the Legislative Assembly without a quorum, first President of the Senate and then President of Bolivia, replacing Evo Morales, who was forced by police and military to resign. Before the prosecutor's office, she explained that she was invited by a group of right-wing leaders to take over the government and did so. Weeks later, one of the leaders of the coup explained it in Mexico. In 2005, Evo Morales blocked the country. He asked for Carlos Mesa's resignation, who resigned in 2005. The president of the Senate resigned, the leader of their deputies resigned, and we ended up with a judge, Rodriguez Betze. He was sworn in a session where there was no quorum at all. Quiroga and other leaders of the political crisis of November 2019 boasted of having succeeded in overthrowing Evo Morales and the movement for socialism. Quiroga even gave orders to the military such as authorizing the entry of a Mexican plane to take Morales into exile. Regarding the entry permit of the Mexican plane, I never thought I would end up as Evo Morales' travel agent, but in the power vacuum, the Mexican plane was in Peru. It did not enter. I talked to the people of the Air Force. I told them to give permission to pacify the country, and also I will not deny it, because the fact that he boarded the Mexican plane and went to asylum meant leaving office, abandonment of functions and made the constitutional succession effective. On November the 9, 2019, one day before Evo Morales was forced to resign, the leaders of the movement were clear that there could be no constitutional succession because according to the laws of the country, only parliamentarians of the movement to socialism led by Morales himself could assume the presidency of the chambers and succeed Morales. Look, the issue of succession with all due respect, let's read the Constitution, between Evo Morales, García Linera, and the chamber president left the devil come and choose. During Janine Añez's one-year government, there were acts of corruption and massive human rights violations, including two massacres. But the ordinary process for violations of law is only processed before taking office. The possibility of accountability trials, as she demands, is uncertain due to the fact that a two-third vote is needed, which requires the support of Creemos and Comunidad Ciudadana, the two right-wing forces that participated in the coup. Freddy Morales. Telesur, Bolivia.